Hi folks and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to make this simple but fun 3D printing animation in Blender using geometry nodes. So let's get straight into it. So first thing we need to do is draw the path for the nozzle to take. In my case I'll be making a serpentine track but you can use whatever kind of track you want. But for this case I'm going to use a mesh plane. So let's go ahead and add a plane. I'm going to name this my track and I'm going to toggle into edit mode and subdivide this plane a bunch of times. So subdivide and then shift R to divide it a few more times. Next, I basically want to get rid of all of these horizontal edges, except for the ones at alternating ends to create this S effect. So with edge selection enabled, let's go ahead and first clear all the selection and then just select all of these horizontal edges and press X and delete edges to get rid of those. I also want to round off these corners so that they're not just at right angles. So come to vertex selection mode and go ahead and select all of the vertices that you want to round off. So all of these guys, then press control shift B and pull on the mouse to create the bevel. Scroll the, uh, the mouse wheel to add more vertices to round it off more smoothly. And there we have our track. For the next bit, let's come into geometry nodes and let's give the track a new node tree. So in my case, since I've made this out of a mesh, I'm going to need to convert this to a curve first so that we can do all of our interesting effects. So go ahead and add a mesh to curve node. Obviously, if you've made your track from a curve already, you can skip this part. Next, add a trim curve node. And this is going to be the basic ingredient to create the animated effect. So if I play with the end value here, starting from zero and then going to one, we can basically make the track appear and disappear. Make sure that the trim curve is set to factor. Now, what you want to do is add a math node, change it to flawed modular, set the second value to one, and then the first value, add a value node. And we're going to add a driver to drive the animation. So type hash frame and then divide it by however slow you want the animation to run. I'm going to set this to 400. And so now if I press play, we can see that the curve starts to appear bit by bit. And so this flawed modulo node, just make sure that the values that get passed from the driver always stay between zero and one, because that's what the trim curve node expects. The next thing we need to do is basically make the front of this track curve upwards a bit because basically we want this whole thing to look like it's being extruded out of a nozzle that we're going to make very shortly. So first add a set position node, add an endpoint selection node, set the start size to zero and the end size to one and connect the selection to the selection. And now if I make this offset in the Z direction, non-zero, you'll see that we now get this end of the, the trail of material starting to point upwards. And if I press play, we have the end point always pointing upwards. There is a slight issue though, which is that I technically want this raised part of the, the trail to stay vertically upright all of the time, whereas right now it's doing this weird wiggling effect. So what I need to do, what I want to do is basically have a condition applied so that this final vertex that's being elevated in the Z direction always stays on top of the previous point. And for that, we basically need to apply the same X, Y position as this second to last point onto the last point as well. So to do that, we first need to find said position of this second to last point. So for that, look for an attribute statistic node, keep it to float point. We want the ID and I want to take the maximum ID and that'll correspond to the, the last point, but then I'm going to subtract one from that. So add a math node, set it to subtract one. And now this value should give me the ID of the second to last point at any stage during this animation. Next, I want to evaluate the position at this index. So I'm going to add a evaluate at index node, set the data type to vector, plug in the output of the subtract into the index, because that's the index I want to evaluate at. And I want to evaluate for the position. So look for a position node and connect that into the value. I only want the X and Y position of the second to last point though. So look for a separate XYZ, a combine XYZ, and plug over only the X and the Y into the combine XYZ. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say at this end point, I'm going to change the offset by this amount here and also set the position in the X and Y to be that of this second to last point. So now if I press play, you can see that this extruded raised part of the material of the curve always remains pointing upwards. So that's all good. The next thing I want to do is I want there to be a little bit of a bevel right around here. I don't want it to be this sharp right angle. I want it to sort of curve off. So it looks like the material is sort of draping across the print bed. So for that, I'm going to add a fillet curve node after the set position, set it to poly, limit radius, 
and set the radius to something like uh, 0 0.1. Then you can up the count to as many as you want to get the smooth effect that you are looking for. I'm going to go with something like 5. So now we have a bevel. So that's basically this printing material almost done. We need to convert back from a curve to an actual solid material. And to do that, let's just add a curve to mesh. And for the profile curve, I want a curved circle. The resolution doesn't need to be so high. I'll set it to 12 and set the radius to something sensible, 0.05. And make sure fill caps is enabled. So now we have our material printing around, maybe something a little finer, 3. And then I also want to apply a material. So let's do a set material node. I'm going to give this whole thing a sort of plasticky material. So in the material properties tab, create a new material, let's call it plastic. And I'll give it the, the purpley color that I used in my animation at the start. Roughness to mm, 0.1, metallic 0, and that should be fine. And let's select plastic in our set material. So that's the extruded material basically done. We'll sort out some of these artifacts later. Let's go ahead and make the nozzle, because we now want a nozzle to sort of track with this extruded front as the print proceeds. So for that, let's just make geometry nodes a little bit smaller. I'll hide the track for now. And I'm going to really simply model this crudely with a, a cylinder. I'm going to add a cylinder. And it's just a matter of modeling this to look like a nozzle. And I'm going to go for something like one of those low lock syringe needle types. So really simple. I'm just going to scale this to give me my nozzle exit. Select the top face. Then I'm going to come into side view. And I'm going to repeat a bunch of extrudes and scales several times to make the rest of the nozzle piece. Something like this. If you want, you can apply Shade Smooth. If you do, just make sure you come to the Data Properties tab, come to Normals, and enable Auto Smooth. Let's also apply some materials. Come to the Materials tab. I'm going to create two types of material. The first is a basic metal, and then another plastic, and that'll apply to the rest of the nozzle. So for the metal, I'll keep it at a whitish color, crank up the metallic, lower the roughness to, say, 0.2. Tab into Edit Mode, enable X-ray View. Just going to select all of these faces at the bottom, select the material and click assign. Then I'm going to assign the plastic to the rest of the nozzle. So without deselecting anything, press Ctrl I to invert the selection, select the plastic and assign that as well. But let's have a look at how this is looking. And we have ourselves a nozzle. One thing to do before proceeding is we want to shift this geometry up so that the origin sits close to or at the exit of the nozzle. I'm just going to tab into edit mode again, A to select everything, G and Z to move it up in the Z direction and something like that will do. Go ahead and rename this nozzle. So that's our nozzle done. Let's bring back our track. I'm going to hide my nozzle from rendered view and let's come back to geometry nodes. So what we want to do is instance the nozzle at the very end of this printed material. So for that, from the trim curve, look for a instance on points. Drag in the nozzle from the outliner to bring it in as an object info node and take the geometry and plug it into the instance. Let's join all of this with the rest of the geometry. So add a join geometry node and connect the instances with the printed material. And you should, like this, get a nozzle all over the place. That's not what we want. We actually only want it to instance on the very end. So we're going to need to apply a selection rule here. For that, first add a compare node, set it to integer. In the first socket, look for ID, set it to equal to. And we basically want to say instance only where the ID equals the second to last point. So that's the output from this calculation earlier. So plug that into the bottom socket and connect the result here into the selection. We might want to scale our nozzle a little bit. I'm going to add a value node to the scale, drop the scale to something like 0.5. And so there we have our nozzle tracking with the end of our print. I also want it to offset a little bit in the Z direction. So go ahead and look for a translate instances node and apply as much Z value offset as needed so that the nozzle sits just above the end of the, uh, the trail of material and adjust the scale or the radius of this printed material so that they sort of match roughly. So now that's beginning to look correct. A couple of things to clean up here. So the first thing is that the motion is quite jittery. You can see that the nozzle sort of jumps along the track and that's just simply because there aren't enough points along the curve. Just simply add a resample curve node before the trim curve. We want to set that to something quite high. I'll set it to like 500 if I play that back. Now we have very smooth action. The other thing you'll notice is that we have a whole bunch of weird shading artifacts, creases happening along the material. 
at the corners particularly. Uh, and that's actually happening from after we fill it the curve, there's a whole bunch of overlapping or overshot vertices. So all we're going to do is apply a merge by distance operation just after the fillet curve to clean up some of the geometry before the curve gets converted back to a mesh. So look for a merge by distances node and you should get an error like this. And that's because we're passing in a curve into merge by distance, although this node is expecting a mesh. So all we need to add is a curve to mesh node just beforehand and then convert it back to a curve after we've cleaned up the topology. Just a curve. And you can see now this has cleaned up a lot of the issues, right? So now that's looking much, much cleaner. But that's pretty much it for the basic geometry node setup to get this animation going. If you enjoyed following along and found this useful, please leave a like and a comment. Subscribe for more content like this and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.